Hi everyone, Liz here, thanks for stopping by. So, today I thought we'd have a little bit of a chat and I'll kit up this little barn owl. Uh, if you remembered, this was my kit that I decided to make uh, into a poured glue canvas. So we're going to continue doing the poured glue, which as you can see is still sticky from when I used the poured glue solution on it. And the other side is still the double-sided tape, if I can get this. <laughs> Uh, the double-sided tape as it originally came. So we're going to sort this one out. I'm going to do this one as whip and chats and show you the comparison as I do the poured glue side that I've made myself and the double-sided tape side that it came as is. Okay, but first of all, I do need to kit it up. It's 30 colours and it did all come in the little grip seal bags. But because I'm going to be doing it as a whip and chat over probably some time, rather than having it uh, loose in a little box that I can easily knock over or, well, anyway, you know what I'm like. Um, <laughs> I'm going to put it into my little 30 bottle case so that they've all got nice screw top lids on and I'm not going to lose them. <laughs> OK, so first I need to put my stickers onto my containers. So I have photocopied the smaller key code purely because let me just get this out get out get out okay purely because the inventory sheet um, is great for me to be able to see uh, and read and i will keep this with my drills and probably refer to it but that is too big to fit on these bottles <laughs> uh, it's just about mm, yeah it's it's um I suppose it would just about fit on the grip seal bags, but uh, no, I'm going to put them into there. So we will keep that and I will put it into my little storage case there and that will go in there to keep it nice and safe. I have to talk to myself as I put things away now, otherwise I forget where I've put them all. Let's put all these drills to one side for now and hope they don't get too staticky transferring them from plastic little plastic bags to the containers because these bags can sometimes get a bit staticky uh, it is squares as well so i have photocopied that key code uh, just used it on my printer just on the copy mode and now i'm going to uh, cut it out and get it ready to stick onto my bottles they may even still be a little bit big um, i need the dmc code i want the dmc code on it but I'm not bothered about the quantity, so I do only need to cut out the three rows rather than the four. So that makes it a little bit smaller and I don't need the quantity in that at the top there, so I don't waste any sticky. Uh, I know that's a waste of paper and oh, my craft inside says, no, what a waste. Uh, but what I would normally do is probably do two or three uh, different key codes at the same time so that I'm filling up more of the paper. So don't worry, I, I do try and conserve paper. Okay, then we're just going to run this through my little Zyron sticker maker. Um, great for just making your little key code sticky for you. So that just goes in the top. Try and keep it in the middle um, and then you end up with the edge so that you can actually get your stickers off the carrier sheet a bit easier. And then just literally just hang on to it to, uh, just loosely and pull it through until your sticker shows. And then it's just got a little serrated end at the edge just to tear it off there. So they're great these machines and they do tend to last a long time and you can get the refills for them as well. I usually have at least one spare refill around somewhere. So what happens is now um, the sticky is on this sort of clear paper. So when you take this off, any remaining sticky stays on that piece of paper. So just scrunch that and throw it away. Oh, it's alive. It's just jumped off my desk and gone somewhere. I'll probably find it stuck to myself later on this evening. And then none of this part of the edges is now sticky, but everything underneath the stickers is sticky. That's far too many stickies, isn't it? Excuse me, I'm just going to have to put the light on because it's getting very, very dark in here now. And it's only about half past two in the afternoon, so I wonder if we're coming out with some rain. So, oops, just turning the light on. There you are. Unfortunately, that will cast a little bit more shadow now, so I do apologise. I do apologise. <laughs> 
so if you just cut from one side and just cut slightly past the sticker then you can get them off easier um, rather than just cutting out the whole sticker and then trying to get your nails underneath or your tweezers to get them off so we'll just uh, cut these out they are quite small these there's two so i could have really done with them in between this size and the inventory sheet size i think uh, but it will keep them in order for me and i do use a magnifying light when i am diamond painting so that keeps things that little bit easier okay let's just get these it's a 30 colors it's only a little teeny tiny painting 20 by 30 and uh, yeah if you saw my video of turning a double-sided tape canvas into a poured glue canvas then uh, you'll have seen this picture before i do like it it is a little owl and i love owls i love seeing them flying i love it when you're going down a country lane at sort of dusk um on an evening and you suddenly look across and you've got an owl flying next to your car they just seem to go along the hedgerows, uh, obviously looking for their next meal. <laughs> as long as I don't see it, I don't mind. <laughs> I tend to get a bit squeamish. I know it's nature and it's animals killing animals, but I don't get very squeamish. Right, so let's get these labels put on these. Oops. Okay, they should just about fit, yes. And it is only copy of paper, so they can start rubbing off eventually as well if your hands are warm. Or if the dog comes and slobbers on them. <laughs> uh, Millie, our little Scotty dog, uh, she's never actually done that, but she does come and sometimes lay on top of my canvas. And suddenly get, I'll be diamond painting away and suddenly there'll be a bump and there'll be a head on the corner of my canvas. And I'm like, don't drool, you've not just had a drink, have you? <laughs> Oops, got two off at once there. Trying to go too fast. So not the most interesting thing to watch, but uh, a necessary step in the kitting up. Well, it is for me anyway. I say you could just put these little stickers on your bags and you're good to go. But as, because I'm doing it as a whip and chat one, uh, then I do want to keep it all in one place. And don't be losing things. Oops. Although I don't think it will take too long to do, hopefully. So you won't be seeing the same painting all the time. That's another two again. Uh, sorry if you can hear talking. Oh, I haven't cut those ones to down. Look, I've missed one. Missed one, missed one. There it is. Uh, hubby has got friends over again, which is great. They seem to be coming on a regular basis now. So he's having lots of uh, men chats, as I call them. And uh, they're all having a good laugh. I mean, obviously, he does keep in touch with quite a few people from work. Um, it's coming up three years now since he last was at work. But he has kept in touch. And it's you know nice to just have a laugh with your friends. And I like to keep out the way because I just think, you know, it, it's although I know them um, and they wouldn't mind me being sat in there. I just think, oh, they can get on and have their little chats and their little laughs about work. And, you know, I... I I mean, you do get involved in your partner's work and you do know uh, various things that you know go on and other people. But there's certain things that you'd be sat there and think, I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> I'd like five an hours at work, you know, if any of my friends came over from work, I would talk about things and he didn't know what I was talking about. So, yeah, it's nice to just leave him to his own devices. Right, let me grab a tray. Right, okay, so I've got a tray now to put the bottles in and let's get started. And I think I'll just work from the bags as they are. So whatever the number the bag says, and then we'll just double check at the end that I've got a full bottle for each one. Probably the easiest way to do it. Okay, so number 28. Yep. Just a second. I will get my magnifying glass out. So if I can't see the numbers, I can now. <laughs> been saying I ought to have a magnifying glass here and I now have one upstairs and downstairs yay <laughs> okay so let's get these to 
pour in. I might double check that I've got the right ones. Don't want to muddle any colours up. Otherwise, the painting will look a bit strange. So that's bag number one emptied. No spills, yay. But we've only started the first one. <laughs> okay, number seven. Seven, seven, seven is that one. I hope everybody is doing okay and um, today is finding you well and hopefully you've got some nice happy plans of things to do and if you haven't then uh, I'm sorry and gentle healing hugs come in your way from both myself and Millie Moo, our little Scottish terrier who is a Scottish terror and the other night absolutely made me jump out of my skin uh, 20 I was just helping hubby in the bathroom and I was telling him or we were talking about um, a scary film that we'd seen earlier in the day uh, we're getting real wusses now which means we're real like scaredy cats and we tend to start watching horror films during the day now rather than on a night when it's dark <laughs> how strange the no battery uh, came up on my phone then I've twiddled the wires anyway and it seems to have gone off so fingers crossed uh, it's just a glitch maybe I didn't have one of the plugs put in properly I've just got it on a, a USB so we'll see how we go anyway so yeah so we're, uh, where was I yeah just in the bathroom <laughs> as you do and uh, we're talking about this horror film and laughing because it had loads of scary bits in it I can't remember what film it was but I know several parts we jumped out of our skin and Millie goes into like the stealth Scotty mode and that's where she creeps up behind you and you don't hear her. I mean, we have carpets throughout the house. So, you know, if we had maybe laminate floors or whatever, your wooden floors, you'd hear her coming. But uh, because we've got carpets, she tends to creep up on you and she always sits right behind you. And with her being black, you don't always notice her either, particularly if it's, you know, later on on an evening, which this was. And we're just sort of like talking and all of a sudden I felt a presence behind me and she went oh really really loudly behind me well I nearly ended up on hubby's knee I mean I just literally shot about six foot in the air and went forward and jumped absolutely out my skin little madam and she just thinks it's really really funny I mean I suppose she was just letting us know she was there but can you find a better way to do it please because you absolutely oh dear me my heart was going like 300 miles an hour oh gosh and then uh, <laughs> i was on the phone to uh, well on a zoom meeting um with uh, a few people and we're in the middle of this meeting and she did it again and she sort of like i didn't know she was there she'd sort of gone under the table where i was sat with uh, the computer in the zoom meeting and she goes oh really loudly well everybody in the meeting just stopped and said what was that and I said oh it was just Millie my little Scottish terrier and you know they're all friends so they all know who Millie is and uh, one of the chaps that I was talking to just says oh gosh I was watching a film about the um oh why is it Sasquatch the uh the Yeti and it just sounded like that they had a recording of it I said oh well it was obviously just Millie getting up going for a walk in the forest <laughs> she just like to let her presence be known um, I've had a few dogs that have sort of like barked and woofed but I've never had one that sneaks up behind you and bows oh dear and then sometimes she'll come up to you and she'll go row, row, woo. anybody who thinks dogs don't talk ought to come and live in this house and listen to Millie when she gets onto one of her rants she stamps her paws as well oh, she gets really uh, quite irate uh, I'm not quite sure how they're getting on with her downstairs. I would think she's got the television on because if you turn the television off when people come round, she sits in front of it and then she turns around and glares at you. And then you do get a ow ow woo. And uh, yeah, she does tend to uh, get a little bit huffy. She likes her television and she thinks if people come round, she's got used to the fact now that I put uh, Toy Story 2 or one of the Toy Stories or a programme on for her to watch. So she goes and sits there now waiting for it to come on. 
not that she always watches it, if somebody's going to play with her or talk to her. Uh, oh, are these going to go in here? Oh, not quite, not quite. So we'll just keep those few in that little bag. It's already labelled, so I'm just going to pop those in the little um, string part at the top there, the little pocket. I'm not going to overfill it. I've not got a spare bottle in here anyway because all 30 colours are used. So it's just as easy to use that. And because there's a lot of that colour, I will probably start using the bag first um, and then start on the bottle. Okay. So, yeah, does your dog watch television? I know Millie is the first dog we've had that's really watched the TV. Uh, I think possibly sometimes it could be because dogs we've had in the past We've had like the old um, CRT cathode ray tubes tellies, you know, the ones that were the real big in a box. Um, and I think the screens were like bowed. So maybe dogs didn't see them quite as much. I don't know. Uh, but they, obviously now you've got like all the flat screen TVs and they're in HD and everything. So maybe dogs see them better. It's still cartoons that she likes best and watches. But honestly, it's like having a, a toddler in the house. Although some days she's more like a stroppy teenager. <laughs> but we do get lots of cuddles and fun out of her as well. I have to say, she makes me smile every day. Wouldn't be without her. Oops, that's one that's just escaped. I'm not wanting to get in that bottle. It's sticking to the finger now. So that's that one. So what colour are we on next? Oh, I don't like these nice bright colours. Number eight. So that's seven. That's eight. I think when you're using these set of 30 storage containers in the 60s, you get used to the fact that everything's in sixes. So you know that number one's here, so it's going to be 6, 12, 18, 24. And you kind of know what row your colour is going to be on if you are working from numbers. Um, and obviously, if you've got the 60 container, then you know everything's in tens and you kind of get used to where the bottles and things are. Which is another reason why I like using them. Okay, let's get these into this one. Oh, they're having a good old loud chat and uh, laugh at the moment. So we have found something really, really funny. Right. Yeah, sorry about that. Just had to blow on my nose. I've got a runny nose. I hope I'm not getting a cold. Uh, sadly, uh, my stepdaughter and her partner have both got COVID. Um, my teenage granddaughter has just recovered from it so they've now got it so it seems to be going around the family but they do live over an hour in the car away from us so we uh, aren't anywhere near them to sort of be in contact with them which is sad because we don't get to see them as often as we'd like but at the moment it's probably a good job it means we're not going to catch covid fingers crossed and um, as you know hubby has us a lot of hospital appointments uh, we're still waiting for test results. Um, he has got a very, very low immunity system. At the moment, we're playing uh, consultant bingo. We've got like a bingo card, and I think we're going through all of them and checking them off as we go along as to how many we've seen. I think we're up to about six at the moment. Uh, we were at the heart eye hospital yesterday, so he has to have um, injections into his eyes, both eyes. Uh, at the moment once a month which is not a nice experience um, and I have to sort of not tell him when his appointment is otherwise he gets really really upset he's quite needle phobic um, and I also don't tell him what it is that we're going to have done because once he gets there and he gets chatting and you know, they look after him and everything then it is fine it's just you know, if I tell him the night before that we've got a hospital appointment the next day, then uh, he doesn't sleep the night before. So it means I don't sleep the night before. And he gets really, really upset and then he starts refusing to go. And uh, he really is terrified. It's really not nice to see. And I think it's like when uh, your partner or, you know, one of your kids or whatever's in pain, somebody who loves in pain, you just want to take it away from them, really. Uh, but sadly, in some cases, you can't. So anyway, that's done for another month. So that's another one ticked off the list, all off the bingo card, as it were. And then I think we've got telephone appointments next week with another consultant. 
and then the following week hopefully we'll get the test results from his bone marrow biopsy so we'll see how we go from there hopefully we'll know a little bit more after that as to what's happening let's get those put in there oh i had, honestly what day was it this week i had a right day i think it was monday oh my goodness me i went out to, to the dustbin and uh, I heard this fluttering noise and I thought, oh, because I feed all uh, the beds. I've got bed feeders and bed tables everywhere and I put lots of food out, particularly at this time of year because the ground is quite frozen. So they'll be bending the beaks if they're trying to get the worms and the insects out of the ground. So I do tend to put fat balls and seed and all sorts of bits and pieces out. And I heard this fluttering and I thought, oh, you know, there's a bed. I've scared a bed. And then I put my stuff in the dustbin. As, as I'm going back to the back, back in the house, um, I, sort, I sort of caught the fluttering again out of the corner of my eye. And I thought, oh, heck, as, you know, I haven't flown away, but it's fluttering as it got stuck on a branch or something. Because next door there's a few trees overhanging our garden. So I went up to it and, uh, it you know, it's trying to fly away. Obviously, it's frightened of me. And I thought, oh, heck, it's got stuck. So I went uh, inside and we have like, you know, surgical rubber gloves. And I thought, I don't want to be touching it with bare hands because we have had quite a few cases, not here, but within a few hundred miles of here of bird flu and things. Um, and I just thought, oh, I don't want to be picking up any diseases from a bird. So if I put some gloves on, that's going to uh, protect me from that. And I just gently went to try and lift him and find out where he was stuck. It was a black bird, actually, but only a smallish black bird. But it was one of our UK black birds. And uh, he didn't try struggling when I picked him up. So that was good. I mean, he must have been terrified because, you know, I mean, oh, they, they see me. They know that I feed them, but he wouldn't want being picked up by a human, I shouldn't think. But maybe he knew I was trying to help him. Anyway, as I tried lifting him up. I realised he wasn't stuck in the branches. He'd got his foot stuck down the slats in the fence. How on earth he'd done it, I just don't know. Our fence is um, a bit like this. It's all wooden slats all fitted together. And where this raised bit is here in this tray is like where there is a little bit of a gap, if you can see there. So that where the raised bit is, that would be the gap in the fence so that as the fences expand when they get wet, it's, you know, it just gives it that little bit of wiggle room. You can't see through it, but, you know, it's just... And it managed to get, and it was a good inch down the fence, so it couldn't get its leg out. And I'm like, oh, no, what am I going to do about this? I couldn't hold on to it and pry the fence open at the same time, because obviously I didn't want to pry the fence open, and then the poor thing just drop and break its leg or whatever. So I'm, uh, I hope he can't come out to help me. Millie's out looking, so I got her shut because I thought it doesn't want to be um, being frightened by Millie. I know, you know, they're used to Millie. In fact, they completely ignore her when they've still got on the bird tables and everything. Um, they completely ignore her and she's not bothered about birds. Either. She doesn't bark or anything or chase them or anything. Um, so I ran across to one of the neighbours that I saw was in. And I said, could you just come and give me a hand? I think she panicked and thought it was hubby that had fallen or something. And I'm saying, no, 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 it's nothing like that. It's, uh, there's a bird stuck in my fence. She must have thought I was absolutely crackers. Um, I'm sure the neighbours probably think I'm crackers anyway. <laughs> I'm forever out doing bird things and strange things and talking to the birds. And... Anyway, that's a whole other story. So <laughs> what we did was I uh, climbed on a chair because it, it is a six foot fence, it is a high fence. I mean, I am tall, but, you know, I wanted to be like above the bed um, and have it in. And I'm talking to him all the time to reassure him. So I've got hold of him really gently. And he wasn't trying to get away. As I said, I do think he knew I was trying to help him. Uh, and she got like a screwdriver and just pushed it in between the laps of the fence so that it sort of like parted the fence just that little bit. And I could just lift him up. And as I lifted him up and just gently started to let him go, he just flew off. And, oh, 
so that was my good deed of the day but i just couldn't believe it i thought how on earth has it got its legs stuck down there it must have been in a real funny position unless i mean it wasn't really windy or anything but it hadn't been there long because i had been out earlier in the morning to the dustbin as well so um i do think you know it it wasn't as though he'd been stuck there all day, but I certainly couldn't leave him. Uh, and animals don't bother me. Animals don't frighten me. Uh, one of my friends said, oh, how could you go near a bird like that? It, the flap. And some people are frightened of them. And it just, you know, I pick spiders up and put them outside, you know. I don't mind spiders. I'm not keen if they suddenly run at you. You know, you get them quite big ones, house spiders that just suddenly run at you. Um, yeah, I can do without that. They do make me jump, but they don't bother me. I'll just um, tell it off and pick it up and put it out the door. You know, just escort it out and say, would you mind please not doing that? I can do without getting to people making me jump. I've got a dog that does that enough. I don't need spiders running across the room looking at me doing the same. <laughs> oh, and I've just spilled them. Oh, silly me. Oh, dear just fortunately there's not many but because there's not many that means i'm gonna have to really make sure that i don't lose any and they're just sticking to my washi tape there just get them off the edge of the desk sorry you can't see that i'm just on the edge of the desk just scooping them all up okay get those put back in there then yeah so maybe the blackbird was um a liz version blackbird you know and uh, it was quite clumsy <laughs> But, oh, poor little thing. Um, I've not seen, we've had three blackbirds in the garden this morning and I've not seen any of them limping. So whether it had a hurt leg, whether I'd managed to get to it in time without hurting itself, I'm not sure. But fingers crossed it's okay. You know, I'd hate to think um, it wasn't. I know birds can fly, but they still need their legs as well. Um yeah, I mean, if I'd have left it in the fence, a cat would probably have got it as well. We do have quite a few cats around here, probably because I feed the birds. But I do keep an eye out and show the cats away um, if they come near. Uh, so that was that event. Then I'm putting some pots away, um, some dinner pots and breakfast pots after they'd been washed. And I managed to drop one of my bowls from my favourite set and that just went plink 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 and I thought yes it's not broken and then it just went the last blink and it cracked into about six different pieces so that was the end of that bowl so I'll have to see if I can get a new one to replace it and then I broke a nail which in the grand scheme of things is nothing but I did breathe a sigh of relief because I am quite a firm believer that things come in threes so we'd had the bed stuck in the fence I'd broken one of my bowls and then I broke a nail so that's my three things over for that day uh, and nothing disastrous for the rest of the day did happen. So, yay. <laughs> oh, dear. I know my dad was laughing at me when I said I'd rescued this bird because, you know, I was quite upset. It was, you know, animals being hurt. And, I mean, people hurt, you know, being hurt upsets me more, but animals being hurt, um, you know, and stuck like that. It must have been terrified and it did quite upset me for a bit. Um, I had to sit down and have a cup of tea. <laughs> And a chocolate biscuit, of course. Nothing like a chocolate biscuit to calm your nerves. And uh, my dad was uh, pulling my leg and saying, oh, was it like a, a scene from the birds next time you went out with the all land up on the fence staring at you? <laughs> the sense of humour runs through the family. And I said, oh, no. no they, it knew that I was helping it. It knew. I said, if I'd have done anything nasty to it, I might have got attacked. But, yeah... <laughs> Uh, just call me Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> I certainly do little, that is for sure. Unless it's diamond painting and then I do a lot. <laughs> right, oh, and speaking of scares as well, I can't remember whether I told you or not. Um, but when we got the new bed, you know, there's still bits they're getting used to. Um, there's still buttons on the car that we've got that I've no idea what they do. And I dare press them. You know, one of them might be the uh, ejector seat. <laughs> sorry about that um my phone just came up flashing battery again so i've just been and got a new lead and switched it all over and redone it all so yeah i don't want her to suddenly go poof uh, and get a homemade perm kit or anything because <laughs> the wires are 
has gone funny. So yeah, I'll just replace that one. I'll, I'll try it somewhere else, but maybe the wire's got a bit pulled, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, so we've got this um, new electric bed so for hubby to help him getting in and out and everything. And uh, again, I, I'm helping him in the bathroom. I must stop doing that, I think. <laughs> Because I saw, as I walked out of the bedroom from the bathroom, I saw this light underneath the bed. And I'm like, there's a light underneath the bed. What's going on? I've never seen that before. And I'm so big. There's a light under the bed. And he says, well, have a look, see what it is. I said, no. He says, don't be daft. Just get and, you know, just look under the bed and have a look. I said, look, I have seen enough horror films to know that if there's something strange underneath the bed, you do not get on your hands and knees and look, particularly when it's dark outside. So he was just laughing his head off at me. He said, oh, what are you like? Don't be ridiculous. So anyway, I've got the remote control for the bed and I'm pressing it and this light's not going off. So I oh, have no idea what it is. Uh, and eventually he did persuade me to get on my hands and knees and look under the bed. And I've got Millie um, sort of like squashed on her tummy as well, right next to me looking, because she thinks this is a game. You know, oh, what's under the bed? Have we got some food or something? Or one of my toys stuck under there. And there's just this light there. So no idea what it was. Um, we must have pressed a button somewhere and this light's come on. Anyway, eventually it just went off on its own. So, and we've not seen it since. So I have no idea what it was. Maybe if I start reading instructions and looking to see what things are, maybe then um, I might actually find out what it is. But <laughs> Oh dear. I must stop watching horror films. It's no good. Right, we have all of these little baggies left over with numbers on. I may or may not keep them. They're quite a nice quality. So I may keep those. We'll have to see. Where can I put them? I'm just going to put them in there for now so they're not flapping about. So they're in that little bit out of the way. Let me just check that I've got some drills in every single one so we've none missing. I did check them but I uh, don't want to. Oh, look at that colour. Look at that colour. Yeah, I don't want to uh, start doing my painting and find that one little bottle is empty. Yeah, it looks like they're all full and I can see that that one's got some in. So that's all 30 colours kitted up. And I'll just give that a little zip. I didn't need my magnifying glass, so I'll put that back in my drawer. <laughs> Tray and my scissors. So, uh, hopefully within the next week, I'm going to start trying to do my whip and chats a little bit more regularly now. Because um, I'm sure there's lots of other silly stories about Millie and our house that uh, does strange things and birds in the garden that I can tell you about. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is, so this has worked. It is nice and sticky for putting drills on. But as I say, put uh, my money where my mouth is and we'll put in the drills on this side. Uh, what I'll probably do is do a little section on this side, possibly a little section on that side as well. We'll see how it goes, see how long it takes. Because uh, obviously I don't want to spend four hours diamond painting and bore you all to death. Uh, and then, you know, we'll do it over time. Okay, well, I hope uh, you've enjoyed uh, listening to me rabbit on and my antics and what goes on in our crazy household. Uh, if you have, a thumbs up is always much appreciated. If you want to come back and see more and uh, see my whip and chats and see what we get up to next, then if you press that subscribe button and the little bell next to it, you'll be notified when my next videos come out. So thanks for stopping by and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye for now.